Come over with us. Stockholm. Yes, I did. Okay, get up the smile. Smile is wonderful. Come on. Come on, Come on. 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 Come
Only animals of the same zoological species can have offspring. What about Mitzi here? Even if nothing comes of it, you'll have one of those magical jungle nights you will remember all your life. Birthday, Sybil. You look charming. Thank you. I'll drink to that. Flowers on the wrong side. You're not available, are you? There. Is that better? The Monte. Hey, Sukia. What in La Hernandia? The Monte. Ancutia. La Echo Tradia. What is it? They're inviting us to the Sing Sing. Maybe later. Tell them we are celebrating Miss Crane's birthday. Well, what a marvelous way to celebrate a birthday. Oh, couldn't we go for a while? It's your night, darling. We'll be right back, gentlemen. Douglas? They're not our trophies. They're wild ones. And that makes it all right with you, huh? The Fetch! Fetch! No, I can't find anywhere. Down ascending, we're presented to the press. Yeah, good idea. We'll say she's pregnant. What? Pregnant? You know, with child, interbred with a human. She's putting on a little weight, you know. Yeah, I've noticed that. We'll get away with it, all right. We'll make the front page of every newspaper in the world. The cover of life. Who is the father? Right? Yeah, sure, right. Douglas, you really would give up all that money just to stop in Kreisen? You're damn right I would. I know you wouldn't, Krebsy. I know you're doing it just... Well, I thank you for it. Listen, you, me, and Topazio, we're gonna knock Van Kreisen right on his can. 
He might even marry her off to some rich guy like Onet. We'll go on a worldwide father hunt. Who is the daddy of Topazia's child? Who is the father? How's that, Captain? Captain. expedition. Who's the girlfriend, Doc? She's a Cuban refugee. Yeah, I got that set. Bye, bye. How's it going, D? Fine. <laughs> What's with Bonnie and Clyde? Oh, that's a... Protégé, Van Kryzen's. Got anything going to Sydney? You'd think a bloke with all his money would do better than that. Yeah. Hey, what's wrong with her? Uh, green apples or something. She'll be all right once she lies down on the plane. Not in my plane, she don't. That funny-looking bag ain't gonna puke all over my upholstery. Green apples? In New Guinea? Yeah. Douglas, you got the problem. It's medical. She'll never make it to Sydney. We must get her to a hospital. I'll take your car. Be all right. Where the hell's a damn doctor? My name is Figgins. You the doctor? Yes, Dr. Figgins. Good morning. Oh, thank you. Where the hell you been? <laughs> oh, it's a disgrace. When it rains like this, it takes me hours to get home. Hours. Uh, do you mind? But I expected it. <laughs> That's why I wore my raincoat. Wonderful. <laughs> Where's the little mother? The mother? and apparently doing very well. Uh, I'll just get my flashlight and examine her further. Doctor, I think maybe you ought to fill out the death certificate, huh? Yeah, but really, I... Uh, right over here. Yeah. Oh, right. Death certificate. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, the professor's had a rough time on it. Yes, I can see that. Uh, father's full name. 
Otto Meyer Krebs. Otto Meyer Krebs. Mother's maiden name. Topazia. What? Topazia. Topazia. What? Topazia what? Graham Insis. What? Graham Insis! Graham Insis. Graham Insis. They're not married. They're not, not married. There's someone at the door. No, there's not. There isn't? Sign it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, where is she? She just had a baby. A baby? Baby's dead. Yeah. This is a court order directing you to turn over the creature to pass it to us. She just had a baby, for God's sakes. We also claim the They're body. both the property of the Takura Corporation. They're not property, they're people. And they can't be owned by anybody. Ridiculous. The mother isn't a woman. She's not a... She's not a woman. What is she? A species of ape. Species of ape. It's a hoax. It's a damnable hoax. You signed the death certificate, Doctor. The death certificate says that baby is Krebs's son. I confess to the murder of Krebs's son by Topazia. My understanding, Mr. Temple, that you have not chosen counsel for your defense. That's right, Your Honor. I don't need a lawyer. I killed the baby. <laughs> I'm charged with murder and I admit it. Not quite. The problem remains that there is no legal definition of man. And the accused confession does not answer the difficult question before us. Now, since a territorial trial does not have a jury, my task is particularly heavy. And I want to hear arguments from both sides. Therefore, I am going to appoint a lawyer for the defense. May it please your lordship. Mr. Bobbington? I should be happy to represent Mr. Temple. The hell you will. These Van Kruisen's lawyers. Mr. Temple. They're trying to make slaves out of the trophy. Mr. Temple! <laughs> We've just learned that the powerful Van Kruisen Enterprises has rallied to Temple's side. They're coming out now. We'll see if we can pick them up for you. Behind them, perhaps you can spot in the white suit, Mr. Eric Chimbu, the prosecuting attorney, who was the first Papuan to become attorney general for the territory. <laughs> Meanwhile, the murder trial of Douglas Temple continues to take its effect around the world. I move to put the question of the trophies on the agenda. This involves the rights of small nations against large ones. The Declaration of Human Rights must include the trophies. Господин председатель! Господа делегат! Три часа мы ждали над что-нибудь от израильской делегации. Now, Doctor, based on your observations and experiments over the last ten months, state whether, in your opinion, the trophies are animal or human. I'm sorry I can't. The trophies are an intermediate species. They resemble both ape and man, but their classification at this stage would be most unscientific. Unscientific, Dr. Graham, or ungrateful? Ungrateful to the man who sponsored your career, backed your expedition, followed you into the jungle, and since his return has directed his public relations staff to promote you for the Nobel Prize. The same man 
who forfeits an empire if the trophies are declared human. Bravo, bravo. You know, I am that. trying to establish, my lord, the true motives the accused had for committing his crime. Jealousy, spite, revenge against the woman who spurned him and the lover she prefers. My lord, you get to the same message, Mr. Another such outburst from you, and I shall take a very serious view of it. Your witness. Thank you. And we do understand, Dr. Graham, that your discovery of the trophies has so upset conventional ideas about the human race that no clear-cut boundary any longer exists. Exactly. No clear division exists. Then the trophies are the missing link, a term, I believe, for an ape. Your term, and most unscientific. My reference was to a creature that completes the chain of human evolution. Uh, may I, my lord? Please. The difference between a PhD and an orangutan is very great and leaves no room for doubt. But if we look at the gradual difference between a chimpanzee and a baboon, between a baboon and Neanderthal man, between Neanderthal man and the Aborigine, and finally, between the Aborigine and you, Mr. Buffington, and I'm skipping half the lot, we don't know where to draw the line. So if you lawyers can tell us, we scientists will be very much in your debt. That's all. No more questions. Very good, sir. Dr. Graham, you are the foremost authority of the trophies, and your opinion is vital to the case. I direct you to consult with your colleagues and return to the court with a Definite conclusion, if humanly possible. A giant for lunch. Mr. Carney, we know that human flesh tastes sweet and pungent, but uh, how do trophies taste? Would you translate, please, Reverend Hall's apple? Trophy's good. Mr. County, are, are you really a cannibal? Me, Methodist. Be seated. Do you accept the definition, Mr. Krebs, that only creatures of the same zoological species can breed successfully? That is sure. It's a scientific fact. Good. I want you to look at this death certificate. Tell me where the information describing the parents of the deceased came from. Me? And the accused. That, that's sure. Douglas Temple knew then, didn't he, that the deceased was the offspring of you and Topazia. He knew that his victim was your natural-born son. He knew also the, the woods were full of male trophies. <laughs> now, you, you can't prove anything by that paper. Well, I thought we'd get around to that. Do you now deny, under oath, that you had relations with the mother of the deceased? Do you? Jack, get him off the hook. Shut up, let him squirm. They like it. Bastard. Mr. Krebs, I am waiting for your answer. We Krebses, you know, we are noted for our huge capacity for liquor, but our low tolerance of alcohol. Also, a complete lack of discrimination. I was drunk, I don't remember. <laughs> and how I doubt I was very effective. <laughs> Mr. Cripps, I wish to have this point very clear. Are you suggesting that the consort of Topazia, by whom she conceived and begat the victim, was not yourself, but rather a male trophy? Yeah, sure. There were lots of male trophies there, much better looking and younger than me. Then why did you state, without qualification, on the death certificate, and again in your deposition to the police, that you were the father? I wanted to make her an honest woman. <laughs> woman? A woman? That's the word I've been waiting to hear! One hundred eighteen distinct sounds, each having its own meaning. We can assume, of course, Father, that you can understand this trophy language. Not always. 
which is to say their talk is sometimes as inarticulate as, as a human being. Thank you, Father. Your witness. Father Dillingham, would you be kind enough to give his lordship an example of the Tropi language? Uh. Oh, look, 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 look. Uh, that means danger, beware. Cuckoo-ack, cuckoo-ack, cuckoo-ack. Uh, where is my mate? That means the rains are coming. My lord. Yes? This testimony is impossible to take down. <laughs> we appreciate your demonstration, Father. Now perhaps you can draw some positive conclusion. Of course. The trophy speak. Thank you, Father. You may step down. Somebody important has just arrived. I'm trying to get a look at him. No doubt he's a witness. But who's witness? Uh, Dr. Eaton, how yes. very good of you to come. Not at all, not at all. With your lordship's permission, would you take the stand, Most please? Yes. Your hat. Oh, my hat. Oh, will you please look at me? Thank you, thank you. Do I sign something? Oh, no, I do beg your pardon. Yes. Yes. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I'm about to give this honorable court is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Be seated. Thank you very much. You are the president of the International Congress of Zoologists this year, are you not? Yes, yes, I am. You're quite right. Now, Dr. Eaton, Dr. Graham has said that her discovery of the tropies makes it impossible to ascertain the exact rung on the evolutionary ladder where the ape ends and man begins. Do you agree with that? Oh, oh no. Quite the opposite. Who would you address his lordship? Who? Oh, yes, I beg your pardon. I said uh, quite the opposite. Thank you. Might I continue? Uh, Dr. what you call him? Um, Dr. Graham. Yes, Dr. Graham. Thank you, my lord. Dr. Graham's study of the fossilized mandible is, of course, a classic. We all know that. But had she made a study of feet instead of the jawbone, she'd know precisely where to place the trophy. Can you explain why, Doctor? The human foot, my lord, is a more primitive organ than the apes, and it tells you the whole story. Consider the ankle, for example. Narrow and thin, the apes. Broad and rather thick, I always think. Man's. And how does that apply to the trophies? When you see the trophy uh, have uh, thin ankles and are still up to point tree dwellers, uh, they can't be of our line of descent. Oh, no, 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 they're not human. They're apes. They're apes. Your witness. Thank you. Dr. Eaton, where were you born? Rhodesia. A long time ago. And were you not until you took your new post, chairman of the Department of Anthropology at Heidelberg University, South Africa? You know a lot about me, don't you? Yes, I was. Dr. Eaton, in Keefe's volume on comparative anatomy, he records that better than 700 anatomical characteristics are common to man. Is that so? 754. 754. So, if but just one of these traits is lacking, would you say we are no longer dealing with man? Oh, I would, yes. And I do, my dear fellow. Then according to that definition, would you say that the pygmies are not homo sapiens? For the sake of convenience, I suppose we can call them man, yes. Dr. Eaton, consider what you're saying. Is it your purpose to... Our purpose is to show that the trophies belong to an animal species, which is what Dr. Eaton said. A hell of a lot more than that. It's a hell of a lot more. <laughs> I quite agree with you. The uh, doctor's remarkable discovery makes a clean sweep of the unscientific notion of lumps together of various species under the single term man. All that exists, my dear sir, all that exists is a scale of creatures to be regulated by the state. And at the top stands the one true man. The white man. What? Yes, of course. Mind you, in the lower degrees, descending from the trophy right down to the poor old chimpanzee at the bottom, what have we got in between? The anthropoid, a man-like creature, perhaps, but quite incorrect to call it human. What you're really trying to tell the world, the 
court and the whole world, which is why you came here, is that the black man is not human. 